So, uh, Assalamu Alaikum, and today we are going to start our new topic about neurotransmitters. Okay. Uh, in my previous lesson, I have taken an introductory lesson for the autonomic nervous system, and we talked about uh, parasympathetic nervous system and sympathetic nervous system. Today, we are going to talk about which chemicals are there, which messengers are there, which are released into our brains, and then the specific messages are being transmitted. So let's start. Okay, so the neurotransmitters that throughout pharmacology you would talk more about is acetylcholine, dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, GABA, serotonin. Like these are the neurotransmitters that you would talk a lot about, okay? So we are going to cover that inshallah today. All right, coming up to this slide again. This is autocrine. Autocrine means that the signal is affecting itself. This is signaling across gap junction, okay? You can say that two cells are together and they are producing an impact on each other, right? Paracrine, which I gave you MCQ also about, it is about a cell targets a nearby cell. You see, a distance is there, okay? <clears throat> endocrine. Endocrine, a cell targets a distant cell through the bloodstream, right? So can anybody tell me in the chat box that, or in the comments if you're watching video, that which one out of all these is about the neurotransmitters? Okay, well done everybody. So you all chose paracrine. And yes, this is the correct answer. Paracrine is the way by which cells transfer chemical messages to the other one in order to make them work. We talked about epinephrine and norepinephrine also. And we discussed that epinephrine and norepinephrine, yes, they are released through endocrine glands. But then again, when we talk in generally about neurotransmitters, we want to say, that they work like that, all right? Okay. <coughs> okay, guys. This is one diagram which I want to, uh, which I want you to either take the screenshot or, um, uh, you know, if you're watching a recorded session, so you should pause the video, draw it somewhere, and literally stick it somewhere in your wall. Um, I'm sure by end of the semester, you would be having a wall dedicated to pharmacology only. Anyways, so uh, 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 this is because of the reason, you see, pharmacology is actually very volatile. And uh, if you want to have a good memorization about everything, all of the concepts, so what I recommend to you is this, just like we read Quran in the morning, um, we should also literally revise uh, pharmacology, like every possible drug that we'll study now uh, in order to retain the concepts and in order to retain the names especially, okay? I try to uh, give you all a lot of mnemonics. Uh, I hope they are working for you, but if I'm go not giving you mnemonic and I'm giving you some tables to learn, so please revise them on like daily basis. Anyways, people, let's talk about it. Okay, you see, Sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system, adrenal gland, somatic gland, right? Okay, Shaji, it's not somatic gland, sorry, somatic nervous system. Here, since we are dealing with neurotransmitter, I want you all to ignore the receptors, all right? Just highlight, let me highlight it for you, that which receptors are there, okay? Sorry, neurotransmitters are there, okay? Because today we are just dealing with the neurotransmitters and nothing else, okay. So you see, in sympathetic nervous system, pre neuron gives ACH. What is ACH? Acetylcholine, okay. In parasympathetic nervous system, pre neuron is giving ACH, that is 
acetylcholine again. Adrenal gland is also releasing acetylcholine. Somatic nervous system is also releasing, wait. Somatic nervous system is also releasing ACH, right? So one thing we can talk about for sure is that ACH is given off by all of the preganglionic neuron and here somatic nervous system is directly linking up with the skeletal muscle and here we call it neuromuscular junction, okay? So here is also ACH release. Except sweat glands, which release ACH. Okay, here we are going to talk about Achaji. Okay, so you see here we have discussed that all of the preganglionic neurons, they're releasing acetylcholine and somatic nervous system is also releasing acetylcholine to the skeletal muscles. We have memorized this, right? Achha. Now let's talk about the sympathetic nervous system. What is sympathetic nervous system releasing? The postganglionic neuron is releasing norepinephrine other than the sweat glands which use ACH. Right, everybody? Okay. Parasympathetic nervous system, again, we have acetylcholine released. Okay. So we, if we just have a glance of this diagram here, we can easily conclude that in normal conditions, in normal conditions, acetylcholine is released, right? Okay. Here also in adrenal gland, if we look, norepinephrine and epinephrine is released. So you see, twice in sympathetic nervous system and adrenal gland is releasing epinephrine and norepinephrine. However, parasympathetic nervous system, all of the preganglionic neuron and somatic nervous system are releasing ACH. Right, everybody? I hope we have memorized this concept because it is a very important concept and based on this knowledge, your entire pharma pharmacology of nervous system is based. Now, if you look over here, today I said I will just focus on the neurotransmitters, not the receptors, okay? All right. I hope this is clear to you all. Let me move on to my next slide. Achha <coughs> Sorry. Just a quick revision, okay? That where exactly sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system was acting, how it was acting in everything. So site of origin is thoracic and lumbar region, that is thoracolumbar, okay? Parasympathetic is brain, sacral area of a spinal cord, that's why it's called craniosacral, length of fibers. In sympathetic nervous system, preganglionic are short, in Parasympathetic nervous system, preganglionic are long. Okay. In sympathetic, preganglionic are short. In parasympathetic, preganglionic are long. Achaji. Then length of fibers, long postganglionic, short postganglionic in parasympathetic nervous system. Here again, postganglionic is long, short is of the parasympathetic, right? Okay. Location of ganglia. Close to spinal cord. Paraventral chain, okay, sympathetic trunk chain, ganglionic chain, these are all words used for it. In parasympathetic nervous system, you have ganglions within or near the vector organs, all right? Pre-ganglionic fiber branching. In sympathetic nervous system, it's ex extensive. In parasympathetic, it is minimal. Distribution in sympathetic is widely distributed. 
that's why our every entire body is affected when we are in stress in parasympathetic nervous system it's limited actually then is type of res response in sympathetic nervous system it is the diffused and parasympathetic is di di discrete we will talk about it okay now in my this slide i discuss with you that the possible neurotransmitters that we are going to study today are acetylcholine dopamine epinephrine norepinephrine gaba and serotonin so let's kick off with acetylcholine in my uh, after one lecture in my like upcoming third lecture i will be discussing with you these neurotransmitters and how exactly it's antagonized in everything in more detail okay but today since it's the very kind of introductory video for neurotransmitters i want you all to please understand and focus completely on it okay so this is acetylcholine as you can see the vesicles are coming they're releasing something and as soon as it's released the neuron nearby is activated right okay and when you see the light is coming you see the light is coming it it means it's telling us that action potential is being generated right that is why you see here light is coming now again the light is that the second neuron is lightened up why the second neuron is lightened up probably because it's also excited okay the for the first neuron was excited and then excited the other neuron and maybe that's how the series of reaction would go on because previously also we talked about that the response can be excitatory or inhibitory okay now you see here synthesis of acetylcholine i want to talk to you right now okay so let's start from here wait um okay okay now you see here choline choline is entered into the neuron by sodium dependent channels it means that it needs a particular potential to get entered later on in mitochondria i'm sure in biochemistry you have studied that mitochondria uses you know then there is entire series of reactions uh, that utilizes glucose and as a result the acetylcholine is produced now this is acetyl and then this is coa coa is coenzyme a guys coenzyme a is just like a taxi okay so this coenzyme a is just the carrier of acetyl group okay now what happens is this this acetyl group comes into the enzyme and this choline molecule also comes into the enzyme and as a result these two are acetyl and choline is joined together and acetyl choline is produced which is pumped into a vesicle all right and then it is released into the synaptic cleft and then the other neuron is excited based on its action here you have to see that this coenzyme a left acetyl and then it entered into the mitochondria again all right okay now you see synapse at the uh, here i want to highlight this name choline acetyl transferase is the name of this enzyme which actually joins acetyl and choline together all right then we have i want you to see that see action potential reached calcium gated channels got increase in flux of calcium as a result the vesicles went near to the uh, the surface and then acetylcholine was released acetylcholine like i've talked to you before it gets docked up on ligand gated ion channels and as a result the sodium ion is pumped in you see that's how acetylcholine works 
over here i want you to later watch this video pause this part of the video and write these names with you these are very important names all right okay so you see on a vesicle which has neurotransmitters in it okay it has <laughs> certain proteins attached to it now these are responsible syntax snap 25 vmp now these are responsible to pull the vesicle towards the uh, surface of the neuron and as a result because of the calcium all right because of the calcium this is the vesicle is uh, vesicle releases neurotransmitters through the process of exocytosis and here you see so many receptors were here which got attached and then the function was produced then we talk about blockage of acetylcholine that on which sides is blocked so you see we have three names which are highlighted here botulinum toxin acetylcholine esterase butyryl choline esterase all right so how exactly this this works let's talk about it you see these guys they are cutting these proteins i'm sure this picture is enough to tell you all that how exactly the uh, this uh, botox guy okay the, this is the chemical which we use in the botox treatment botulinum this is produced by a bacteria all right so how exactly this breaks up the proteins okay so this is a very uh, you see even on the uh, on the uh, this label it's written that botulinum toxin type a and here the brand name is written botox cosmetic so what exactly is done with it that it is injected on various surfaces of the skin and it helps to you see this guy okay all of the wrinkles are removed so this uh, this is a toxin which is released in uh, which is used to uh, keep the wrinkles away however if this toxin instead of you know uh, like affecting on the skin it enters in the blood stream then what could happen it can lead to paralysis all right so you see the toxin binds irreversibly which is bad to the pre sympathetic membrane of the peripheral neuromuscular and autonomic nerve junctions and then as a result paralysis happens and sometimes even death so just imagine you go to the botox and this thing happens well uh, i'm sure the people who are doing it are really good at it but again this is a side effect one can um, easily have okay if you go to somebody who is not professional all right then is butyryl choline esterase okay so you see over here we talk about this and uh, this chemical and we also talk about this chemical all right so acetylcholine esterase a and uh, this butyryl choline esterase both of these what they do is this that uh, they are in the synaptic cleft and what they are doing is this that they break acetylcholine within the synaptic cleft and break it into choline and acetate and here this uh, e stress as is acetylcholine e stress it actually blocks choline to get entered into the uh, neuron so this is a bad thing okay so blockage here we have some medicines for example let's say my neurons are overexcited and i want to calm them down in order to do that we use several medications which we will be talking about in my later classes